Hi. Hi, I'm Sue. And I'm Shelley. We're professors at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign uh, in the Department of Food Science and Human Nutrition. In my lab, we study food material science. And basically, what that means is we study the, study the structure of a material so that we can better understand its function. And with this knowledge, we aim to try to extend the shelf life of the food, the quality, and the safety. And in my research group, we study sensory science, uh, which is to study sensory properties of food. And it's an important scientific discipline in food science because it's an integral part of new product development. So Shelley and I, as we mentioned, work together a lot. And uh, we have three papers, uh, one already published in Journal of Food Science and two in the upcoming November issue about uh, sugar beet and sugar cane differences. We also had uh, co-authors on the papers, Brittany Urbanus, Jennifer Cox, Emily Eckland, and Chelsea Ikes. Sucrose, commonly called sugar or table sugar, is an important commodity worldwide because of the sensory, physical, and chemical properties it gives to a variety of foods. The two main plant sources used to extract sucrose are sugar beet and sugar cane. Now, if, uh, the sugar that's made from those two is greater than 99% sucrose. And so you'd think, with that in common, that they would behave virtually identically. But from our research, we found that that wasn't true. The motivation for this research actually began uh, several years ago when a student of mine was looking into the thermal properties of sucrose. And what she found is that there was a thermal behavior difference between beet and cane sugars. The cane sugar started to lose its crystal, uh, crystal structure and turn brown at a lot lower temperature than that for beet. So that led us into wondering what could be that difference. We found that there was aroma differences and minor chemical compound differences already explored in the literature. But this didn't um, address the thermal properties, but we wanted to take it a step deeper and understand more about the sensory properties of the sugar. There was a, not very much research in this area, and so that led us to exploring what the sensory differences were between beet and cane sugars. So in our first paper, we used Tetra test, which is a type of dis difference test, to see in if, in fact, there is a difference existing between the two sugar sources. And we found that there is, um, especially by the aroma and aroma by mouth and taste. Uh, when it's taste only isolated, then there wasn't a significant difference. Uh, we further investigated what were the differences using descriptive profiling um, and found that there were several attributes such as off aroma, um, barnyard uh, aroma, uh, oxidized aroma that uh, were different between the two sugar sources. In our second paper we wanted to incorporate the sugars into different product matrices to see if the differences extended uh, when they were incorporated into an actual product because in general uh, practice, sugars are used as ingredients. Um, and the six matrices that we used were simple syrup, pavlova, pudding, whipped cream, sugar cookies, and iced tea. And we found that in simple syrup and pavlova, the panelists were able to uh, find that there was a significant difference, but the rest, the other four product matrices, we were not able to find a difference between the two sugar sources. In our third paper, we extended uh, to see if there is uh, information bias because there's a lot of uh, mass media press that uh, people prefer one or the other, and knowing that the sugar is made from beet, they would not use that for s specific applications. And so we used a beverage mix and beverage uh, matrix to see if providing the information changed their liking. And what we found was that even though they were able to find a difference between the two uh, sugar sources when it's in a mix, which is 90% or more sugar, uh, 
there wasn't a significant difference in liking change when we provided the information. Uh, with the beverage, because we add more water and there's significant less sugar, uh, the panelists were not able to find a difference in the two sugar sources. And of course, when we provided the information, that really didn't bias them either. The future steps in our research are based on uh, two main underlying factors that we think influence the sensory differences that we observed. The first is the aroma profile, and that was established previously in the literature and that uh, Sue had spoke about. The second is the textural differences that were observed in the pavlova. We tied those textural differences to thermal properties. So currently in my lab, there's a student that's spending her entire uh, PhD thesis looking at the thermal differences between beet and cane sugars. So stay tuned. There's going to be more sweet research in the future.